Welcome back everybody to the channel. This is Playing Games with Flash. Thank you for joining me. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share, all that fun stuff. Thank you. It's very much appreciated. So, in today's video, or this particular video, I would like to talk about Back for Blood. So, Back for Blood just hit at the time of this recording, I don't know, sometime last week, whatever the case may be. Uh, straight to Game Pass if you have Xbox and Game Pass or PC, whatever. So really great there. Back for Blood is the spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead. So those of us that have been gaming for some time now remembers that series from back in the day, Turtle Rock. Kind of a co-op you know, zombie fighting survival horror experience. Eh, horror is a strong word, but if you're freaked out by this kind of stuff, it, it might be a little scary for you know, seeing zombies and stuff run up on you real fast. I digress. So this is a direct vein from those Left 4 Dead games. So I just want to get into kind of the meat and potatoes of Back 4 Blood. This is, this is not a full review. I don't think I'm going to put this game on my review series, but I've played enough of the game to give you a complete kind of breakdown for the most part. I've put a bunch of hours into this game and I'll get into some my thoughts on that. First off, let me say that there's a difficulty ramp for this game that might be unexpected. Now there's three difficulty levers. There's kind of the standard, then there's veteran, then there's nightmare. The standard is kind of what you'd expect. Now for experienced gamers, it, it might come off as kind of easy. But the problem is that once you vamp up to veteran, it gets incredibly difficult, in my opinion, and the opinion of the of a few people in my gaming group, right? So I don't even know what Nightmare is like, and I don't want to know because I don't, not that I don't enjoy the difficulty, I just don't have time for, to not complete things, okay? And that's kind of what those higher difficulties are. Continuously, continuously going at the same thing over and over again. You're gonna die a lot. You're gonna have to figure things out, whatever may have you. Now, getting into the core gameplay of this game, it's very as you would expect. You have a set group of characters, they each come with their own kind of abilities, which you can mostly take whatever direction you want. The major distinction amongst the characters is they all have a different passive. One character, for example, grants, you, grants the team, uh, you know, kind of a stamina buff. One of them grants the team a speed buff, you know, a, a movement speed buff. One of them drops ammo for the team. You know, th there's a character that has uh, a buff for, you know, different healing aspects. And then they have their own individual buffs, like one is uh, kind of, again, a stamina buff for that one character. And then like an instant revive once per round for another character, things of that nature. Uh, it's always going to be four characters playing at any given time. So whether it's you just playing by yourself, the game will give you three AI bots. Again, if it's you and a couple of three friends, it'll find you a fourth player or how many ever players, two other players. And if it can't, it'll drop in a bot. So if, some, or if you start with four human players, and it, one person drops out, the next round it'll drop in a bot, okay? So there's always gonna be four. What characters you choose, cause let's not get it twisted, while, while you can get fun and very complete gameplay with any of the characters, some are better than others, okay? Uh, some of those characters just have abilities that aren't super useful. I'm looking at you, Jim. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're just not, they don't do a lot for the player. They don't do a lot for the squad. And, and it is what it is, you know. So keep that in mind. But again, when you're playing on that first difficulty level, 
or the lowest difficulty level, if you will, it, it kind of doesn't matter who you pick. The game's going to kind of let you, especially if you're playing with other players, AI, you know, with other human players, the game's kind of just going to let you, let you plow through. But that veteran difficulty level, let me tell you what. You and your squad have to have a very coordinated effort. And you have to use very a diverse set of characters to get through any large percentage of the game. And you kind of have to get lucky with the cards. So let's dive into the cards, because this game has a card system that sets it apart from other experiences of this type. When going through rounds, the game will, you, you, you can build a, a, a deck, if you will, of the cards up to 15, and the game lets you select each round a certain amount. Usually you start off with like three, and then it'll let you select more. Again, all this is also affected by the difficulty levels. And the veteran it lets you select one more per round from your deck. The next one up, the next set of, you select from, it'll give you an option to select from three. You select one more to put into your deck each round. Could be anything from melee boost, stamina boost, to squad, you know, ammo capacity boost. It, it's a number of different things. Now, while the card system might not seem very useful or might not seem very impactful on the lower difficulty level, and in the early game, trust me, on the higher difficulty level, and once you progress through more of the game, those cards are super important. Big time. And will make or break your rounds or runs if you don't get if you don't pull a good card or if you don't have impactful cards in your deck. Absolutely 100%. And again, what I mentioned before about the luck is that each round it also draws corruption cards that will affect your run. It might add mist, kind of a fog thing where you can't see past like 10, 15 meters in front of you, right? And it also affects some of the character's passives, right? So it, you might have like hordes where it brings stronger, more quantity and stronger zombies or you might have a certain particular type of zombie or it might drop a boss in throughout the level the ogre boss that you have to keep fighting and no matter how far in you get you have to keep dealing with it and you might have to double back but you might run into different zombies if you double back or go too far forward let's just say that if you don't want to be frustrated by this game, don't play on any higher difficulty than the first one. Or the lowest one, if you will. Don't play on Veteran. Don't play on Nightmare. Unless you're a gamer and you're really, you know, you're really trying to get those extra supply points. Which is how you also get better, a lot of better cards and also how you get uh, better... Or how you can get different gear and stuff for your characters, change your banner and stuff like that. Is you get supply points and you get more supply points on the higher difficulties. So it's kind of incentive to, to play the higher difficulties. But I promise you, if you're not a huge gamer gamer and you just want to check this game out and you like this style of game, but you're not like a hardcore gamer at heart, don't don't play this game past the lowest difficulty. Because you're not gonna enjoy yourself. You're not gonna get off the second level of act one. You just, it's just not gonna happen. And you're gonna be angry, <laughs> and you're gonna be frustrated, and you're gonna think the game is bad <laughs> because of it. Um, but overall, I think this is a good game. This is a very good effort. It has, uh, like I said, unique things about it. And it's just good, it's good, it's a good time. If you have a group of people that enjoy this type of game you're gonna have a good time with this game it's definitely a game to ex be experienced and you get the full enjoyment out of this game when played with friends and other people you know online whatever the case may be make some new friends go jump in with some randoms and make some new friends if that's what you're playing for if you're playing to really get through don't play with random people <laughs> You're not going to have a good time. Okay, so grab your friends. 
go ahead and check out Back for Blood. If you have an Xbox like I do, kudos to you because you got Game Pass, you didn't have to pay for this game. <laughs> okay. So go check out Back for Blood. Go enjoy Back for Blood. And uh, this is Playing Games of Flash. I appreciate you joining me. Make sure you check out the last video. Check out whatever video the YouTube algorithm says is for you. And check you next time. Peace out.